The area today, tonight, and Tuesday will give us clouds and showers and maybe an isolated thunderstorm. The high near 60 today, 55 tonight, and the temperatures with some gusty winds on Tuesday should be averaging close to about 70. Showers and thunderstorms will taper down a bit on Tuesday night, but more showers expected with some sunshine Wednesday. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. China has imposed tariffs of up to 25 percent on nearly 130 U.S. imports, including pork and wine. French President Emmanuel Macron is gearing up for a showdown with trade unions as train drivers plan to walk out from Monday evening. And protests are taking place in India by Dalit organizations, with violence leading to reports of deaths and injuries. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday to you. I hope that everyone is having a great start to their semi-wet and chilly day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quavila Jones, and my special guest today is Dr. Sharice Jones-Branch, Sharice Jones-Branch um, history professor at Arkansas State University. So thank you for joining me. I'm happy to be here. All right. As always. <laughs> Thank you. I love when you come because I feel like I just, you just instill so much knowledge and inspiration and makes me want to do some extra research and learn as much as I can mm-hmm. about I'm, our history. Oh, good. So I'm, I'm glad to know I don't overwhelm you <laughs> no, with all man. the information. Because <laughs> I can go overboard sometimes. <laughs> I just get so excited about it all. I think I overwhelm myself because I feel like I don't know enough. So oh, nobody I need to does. dive deeper and nobody I need does. to just read as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be talking about an upcoming lecture that you are uh, presenting at Arkansas State University on tomorrow, mm-hmm. April 3rd, in the White River Room in the Student Union. Mm-hmm. It is called, okay, let me see if I can get this right without looking at it, <laughs> oh, Fighting, Protesting, and Organizing African Americans in World War World War One, Arkansas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, yay! <laughs> so <You> did fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that your lecture is part of a series mm-hmm. on the Great Wars, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. please tell us how did this opportunity present itself to you? Well. Um, Sherry Eskridge, she uh, works in the library at Arkansas State, and she asked me and a couple of other historians if we would be willing to work with her on this project to bring this exhibit on World War I in Arkansas to the library, and if we would be willing to participate in a series of lectures about various aspects okay. of the war. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, so is, war, is this a particular topic that you cover some in your classes? Um, absolutely. Um, I, of course, will talk more about African Americans in World War One more generally. Okay. Um, but I have given this particular uh, talk before in a different form. Um, about six months ago, there was a seminar on Arkansas during World War One okay. um, held at the Old State House Museum in in Little Rock, okay. and I gave a part of this talk there okay. along with a couple of other panelists. Um, but I've added some things to it because, as you know, I'm always researching and reading, <laughs> and so when I find those things, I just go ahead and add them to to my collection of stuff. <laughs> okay. So without giving away too much, too many details of the lecture, because we would love for people to come out and enjoy the lecture firsthand, give us some snippets of what you will be covering. Okay. Well, um, of course, I'll talk a little bit about uh, African-American soldiers from Arkansas in okay. World War One, but that's certainly not where the story ends. I'll also, as I always do, include African-American women's stories, oh. African-American organizations that um, help with the, with the war effort. Okay. And I'll also talk about how this was a war that was fought to, quote, make the, war, the, make the world safe for democracy, end quote. Um, but it didn't quite work out that way. Things okay. weren't quite 
so democratic for everybody. Okay. For those who may not know, can you give us some background on what World War my tongue is tied saying that World War One was about? <laughs> well, basically the war starts in nineteen fourteen. Um and it's an international war, hence the name World War One. Um, and the United States doesn't become involved in the war until a few years later. Actually, we don't become involved in the war until about 1917. So we aren't involved in it the entire time. Okay. Although the United States is certainly sending weapons and other resources to Europe, um, we don't necessarily have soldiers on the ground until 1917. And, okay. in, and quite a few of those soldiers were African-American. But in addition to sending African-American soldiers, uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about is what black people are doing back here on the home front because it's not just about guns and bullets. Okay. It's also about all the other things that make wars happen that happen back on the home front. Okay. Now, looking at the title again, uh, Fighting, Protesting, and Organizing, mm -hmm. give us some insight into each of those aspects. <laughs> Well, um, for me, the fighting is not only about um, extending democracy abroad, but also realizing it here in the United States. Okay. Um, and that's a struggle that African-Americans have had all throughout the course of history. Um, the rhetoric, of course, is once they get Americans behind the war is that you're supposed to extend democracy to these different parts of the world. Okay. But um, African-Americans also say, well, I'm fighting to defend this country will the country protect my interests, okay. right? Um, and the protesting part comes in where, again, people are organizing here on the home front and saying these are the kinds of injustices in this country that need to end. And also they're, they're, they're highlighting the hypocritical nation, the, the hypocritical notion, excuse me, of fighting a war for democracy when you're denying it to your own citizens. Okay. And thoroughly organizing is what people are doing with their organizations as individuals, to realize all of those things. And along with that, the cost of a lot of this activism. So there's a lot that's going on. It's not just soldiers, weapons, and bullets. Yes, and we see that, you know, in today's time, when it comes to different um, organized demonstrations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there has to be a lot of logistics. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine the logistics that goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. to put this together. Yes, now we have access to social media, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Someone can send out one tweet post on Facebook or Instagram and it just circulates, but mm -hmm. unfortunately they didn't have that back then. So I can't even imagine what the communication was like mm -hmm. because I'm sure, well, I say I'm sure. Okay. Let me ask, let me ask rather than say, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what was the concentration of black population? Were you able to look at, um, population um, um, around this for the state as a whole? Um, absolutely. One of, the, one of the things that helps me put these presentations together is looking at African-American newspapers. Okay. Um, and for those of you who aren't aware and are part of the A-State uh, community, we have a database that has African-American newspapers that you can access if you're a student or if you work for the university. And you oh. can find out what people are doing in Arkansas um, in other parts of the country during the war. You can look at newspapers that were published during World War I that were um, owned and operated by African Americans. So that's one way that I was able to glean a lot of information, a whole lot of information. Um, I also look at things like census records. Um, I look at things like Ancestry.com, okay. which allows you to piece together biographies of okay. people's lives. I also look at um, big national African-American newspapers like the Chicago Defender. A lot of people don't realize that the Chicago Defender um, is not just a paper for people who live in Chicago. Many oh. of those black people came from other places like Arkansas. So they have sections in the Chicago Defender that um, will tell you about what's going on in Little Rock, that will tell you about what's going on in really, really small African-American communities okay. throughout the South. So again, just by looking through all of that, and it's wonderful that all of this stuff is digitized because you know, just 15 years ago, I had to actually go look at the papers. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's I don't have to do that now. That is amazing. Okay, so looking at these papers and other documents, um, this is one thing I'm learning in one of my classes now. I'm taking methods of social re social research, so we're learning about content analysis and how to actually conduct research. This is very interesting for me. So um, were you able to piece together how they communicated? Maybe did they use 
and I'm speaking about African Americans, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if they use some type of code language, I'm like, what was, what are some interesting things you found about how they communicated concerning the war and helping each other out? They used the newspapers. Okay. And 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 in Arkansas, and particularly in places like Little Rock, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Mosaic Templars Cultural Center, mm-hmm. which was the Mosaic Templars of America back then. They took out a one-page ad in the Arkansas Gazette urging African Americans to support the war effort, to purchase war bonds, to get behind um, to get behind the nation. So there was nothing really stealth about okay. what they were doing. They supported the war effort. Okay. But then on the other hand, if you look at African, predominantly African American newspapers, they are saying, um, we're supporting this war, now will the nation support us? So they weren't very secretive at all about okay. their expectations. Okay, so through your studies, do you feel that African Americans, I mean, we know some of the history when it comes to leading up to the 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, we know that there still was a struggle when it came to equality, Mm -hmm. acceptance, Mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, But after the war, did you see any findings of maybe, okay, they're gaining some type of respect or I don't know if that's what I want to use um they're being accepted in certain areas like no <laughs> it was but, but I mean but but the struggle that you know that doesn't dampen their activism at all okay um in fact it, it intensifies it and one of the things that happens as a result of that to let you know how intense this activism is is that um you know American soldiers African American soldiers are being killed when they return to the home front because because they're 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 challenging the racial status quo and they've experienced a freedom abroad in Europe in places like France for example and they expect that when they return here but the nation is not willing to do that I was going to ask about that um, after the war or maybe even some points during if African Americans had the opportunity to travel did they find themselves just staying and just relocate, well, just relocating to other countries mm-hmm. um, as a means of, I guess, refuge or. Well, um, what I what what is also happening during this period is that people are moving to different parts of the country because of the war effort okay. and because it provides increased opportunities. Um, what's happening alongside World War One is also the Great Migration. Mm-hmm. So you, for example, have people who will leave the Arkansas Delta and end up in Chicago, okay, or in East. St. Louis, Illinois, or, or someplace like that. Um, but here's the thing a lot of people don't realize. Yes, people are migrating to access different and better opportunities okay. and to get away from things like racial violence, um, but they're also traveling abroad. Okay. Not, not so much during the war years, obviously, okay. but I mean, I have amp- more than enough evidence of well-to-do African-Americans who go on cruises. Cruises. Mm-hmm. There were cruises back then. There were there were cruises back then. Yes, yes. People were going on cruises and 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 you know traveling to foreign lands and yeah. I mean then yeah. That's it's awesome. and, it's, and, and and it wasn't unusual that they were doing any of this stuff. We just haven't heard a whole lot about it. Okay. Well, I want to bring it back to Arkansas. So that is the focus of your uh, lecture. Mm-hmm. What were some other interesting things? Um, let's talk about the women because I know that you do a lot of research. Love it. And we're actually <laughs> going to talk about a Love book it. that's coming out in the second half of the show concerning women, uh-huh. um, women's involvement. And let's talk about the women's involvement okay. in Arkansas during this World War One time period. Well, um, you know, like women all over the place during the war, African-American women are involved with the American Red Cross. One of the things that I'm going to show folks is an image um, of an African-American Red Red Cross nurse, American Red Cross nurse okay. during the war. So they're involved in nursing um, when they're setting up these sewing spaces all around the state. Now, bear in mind, these places are all segregated, but black women are sewing for soldiers too. Okay. Right? I mean, they can't do it where white women are, but but they're sewing for soldiers as well. Um, and they're also assuming traditionally male jobs because there's a shortage of male labor. 
Oh, wow. Right. So I have a couple of examples of that as well that I'm going to show people. That is really interesting. Again, this um, lecture is going to be taking place tomorrow, April 3rd uh, at 4.15 p.m. Yes. in the White River Room of the Student Union on the campus of Arkansas State University. Please go out and hear Dr. Sharice jones friend. She's an awesome speaker. Oh, thank you. Amazing. So <laughs> um, like, she does her research and the information is laid out mm -hmm. eloquently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, and I have pictures because... <laughs> You don't want to hear me just blather on. I have, what do the kids say now? Receipts. I have receipts. <laughs> yes. And that helps to really bring the story together. I think so. And I get really, really excited when I find these things in the, in these, um, digital newspapers. Oh, I want to say good morning to Clara Hodges. She says, yay, Dr. Sharice. Is that one of your students or colleagues? No, Miss Clara. I've known Miss Clara for 20 years, <laughs> all the way back when I was at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. Wow. Yes. Ooh, yes. Thank you for checking in, Miss Clara. And thank you for everyone else that is watching. Um, I can't see who you are, but thank you for watching on our Facebook live stream. If you have any questions or comments for Dr. Branch, give us a call at 870-277-1080 or leave us a message in our Facebook live stream. We'll be happy to address it. Uh, Dr. Branch has a wealth of knowledge at her fingertips, so I'm sure there's not a lot she can't answer. <laughs> and and if I don't, I, if I can't answer it, I'll get back to you. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very good at doing research. So. <laughs> Most definitely. Now, during this time period, of course, people had children. Mm -hmm. was, was there any record? Were there any records found on what was going on with the children during this time? Well, I'll tell you, um, if, you're, if you're speaking um, predominantly about African-American children, yes. one of the concerns is for black women during World War One is getting um, juvenile facilities, what they used to call once upon a time reform schools, I okay. guess, um, because they had them very early on for white children, um, but they don't have them for black children. So what that means is if a child, a black child is convicted of a crime, right, um, and they were sent to jail, there was no juvenile facility for black children. They were sent to prison with hardened criminals. They were sent to prison with hardened criminals. So one of the things that black women are doing during World War One is that they're using their limited political access to talk to the governor um, and other folks to say, we need this facility for black children. Black children should not be in jail with hardened criminals. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So from your research, uh, were you able to find maybe when or how, when if one was oh, sure. started? Okay. Um, uh, I, in Arkansas, I know the earliest juvenile facilities for black males was established during World War I. Okay. Now, for young black women, there isn't one established until about 1948, 49. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a black woman and you commit a crime, if you're a black and female, regardless of age, you commit a crime. If you are a young person, you're going to prison with hardened criminals. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a lot... Um, we should have a lot of gratitude for the work that was done before we were even, before maybe our grandparents were even. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and the organization that spearheaded this effort and kept at it for decades was the Arkansas Association of Colored Women, which, by the way, is an organization that still exists. That's wonderful. So maybe we should all check into that and see how we yeah. can get involved, mm -hmm. especially in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, even though we, it may seem like we are progressing there's well, still are. some work there's just, always work that we can just be can't done. get comfortable with that yes <laughs> so, yeah that's what i would say okay so hopefully some of this younger generation the ones that are coming behind us mm -hmm. in their 20s and 30s mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, not there anymore <laughs> no. we're passing the baton well not fully but yeah, no i'm still uh, holding on to my baton <laughs> We do need more to stand up. Um, Absolutely. And so I want to kind of compare and contrast because I'm also doing a research paper on this for class. Mm -hmm. Looking at the youth presence mm -hmm. during protest demonstrations, mm -hmm. was there a youth, just say teenage, what we call millennials, mm -hmm. um, was it a youth presence during that time? 
Ab absolutely. I mean, there's always been okay. a, youth, a, a, a presence of younger people protesting the racial gender status quo um, or what have you. I was just telling my students the other day that what they're seeing now is not new. Okay. Right. Um, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but um, in my U.S. Civil Rights Movement course, which I teach every spring, um, we just got through talking about a young woman named Barbara Johns, who back in the 1950s in Prince Edward County, Virginia, led the entire school <laughs> in a strike, essentially, oh, wow. because conditions were so poor, right? So this is during the time of segregated schools, black schools aren't wow. receiving equal funding. You know, they didn't wait on grown folks. Sometimes if you wait on grown folks, you'll be waiting until kingdom come. <laughs> so, so I say all of that to say that what we're seeing now it's it's not new um a lot of people don't know anything about the children's crusade in birmingham alabama in 1963 for example and i show my students pictures of people who are very clearly um elementary age so there's absolutely nothing new about this about what we're seeing in the 21st century okay well i am definitely going to have to pick your brain and get, so i can get some um of my bibliographies from you okay. <laughs> on where to do my research because okay. I really want to focus on what's, what is the push mm -hmm. that causes young people to say, okay, it's time for us to speak up and speak out and mm -hmm. be present mm -hmm. and not just let the grown folks um, speak mm -hmm. for us. So. Well, I um, actually <laughs> had my students read, and I can look it up for you very here quickly here on... Um, Amazon, but it's a book called, I think it's called If We Could Change the World. Okay. Yeah, and it's about young people, if we could change the world. And it's about young people um, as who, who are active, who have long been an active part of America's struggle for equality. So it's If We Could Change the World, Young People and America's Long Struggle for Racial Equality. That's the title of the book. Okay. And it came out a couple of years ago. And it talks about that very thing. And it's not just about African-American children. It's about young people okay. who have always challenged the status quo. So again, it's not new as of 2018. It's always happening. All right. Well, we thank you. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. And we're going to get into talking about a book that's coming up called Arkansas Women, Their Lives and Times. This has been edited by Dr. Sharice Jones French and Gary T. Edwards um, and written by some others. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. How can you tell if your relationship with your child is strong or weak? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Just like anything else in life, parenting will bring out strengths and weaknesses in you. For example, you may be great at spending tons of time with your kids, yet struggle to communicate well with them. So, to help you honestly evaluate your relationship with your child, there are 15 questions to ask them. First, ask your child, how do you know I love you? Next, ask, do I spend enough time with you? Third, ask your child, do I listen to you well? For more questions to ask your son or daughter to help evaluate your relationship with them, Check out my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. K-L-E-K thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. 
Starks Auto Plaza, your pre-owned superstore, is a longtime supporter of KLEK. 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard, Starks offers clean, reliable vehicles of all makes and models. Starks also offers no-hassle pricing with approved credit. At Starks, you're always family, and our motto is, we never say no. 870-203-9980. StarksAutoPlaza.com. Tune in to Community Conversations every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. here on KLEK 102.5 FM. Join host Quabila Jones Harden as she talks to people who are making a difference in the community and learn about the people and organizations that provide services to make Jonesboro a better place. Community Conversations every Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated presents our Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast Saturday, April 7th, 9 a.m. at Presley's Place, 320 South Main Street in Jonesboro. The Scholarship Breakfast will recognize the winners of the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship, which is given each year to deserving African-American high school seniors in the area. The featured speaker is Reverend Hervey Newsom. A full breakfast meal will be served. The deadline to apply for the scholarship is March 16th. Applications, tickets, and other information is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or any member of the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Incorporated. Hello, my name is Quibila. I am over 40 and trying to live my best life possible, but I have secondary lymphedema. It has truly altered my life. The most frustrating part of this is that it went undiagnosed and improperly treated. After enduring several surgeries, I was told in a nonchalant way that maybe losing weight will help. I urge you to listen to your body, do your research, and talk to your doctor. Don't waste time on getting the help you need now. At 33, a wife of 17 years and three children, my name is Kara Mack. I was diagnosed with lymphedema after the treatment of breast cancer. Learning about the lymphedema diagnosis is on the rise in the medical community, although there is the least interest of research. Inspired, learning I have lymphedema inspired me to become an advocate. Be aware. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kabila Jones, and my special guest today is Dr. Sharice Jones Branch from Arkansas State University, where she is a history professor. Mm -hmm. She will be conducting a lecture, or presenting a lecture, I should say, on April 3rd, tomorrow mm -hmm. at 4.15 p.m. in the White River Room of the Student Union. What is that on the third floor? Yes, okay. it is on the third floor. So you yeah. don't want to miss this lecture. We talked a little bit about it in the first part of the show. We can't give away all of the details no, no, because no. you have to come see. We it. want you to go <laughs> see it. And she has pictures, so it's not just her standing up there talking to you. She actually has some pictures and different things mm -hmm. that go along with the presentation. And the lecture is called "Fighting Protesting." I spelled that wrong. Fighting, protesting, and organizing African Americans in world. Ugh, World War One, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. All right, and so we have a message from Helen. Hi, Miss Helen. She says, um, "My daughter learned that they even use children as spies um, back in the war. Did you ever? Did you run across anything of that nature?" Um, I did not, but I I think it's entirely likely okay. that they did. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna move into another topic. We're gonna be talking about a book that you've you know touched on this topic times that you were here before mm -hmm. and now it is finally coming to fruition. Yay. It is published and <laughs> going to be released. So this is called Arkansas Women, uh -huh. Their Lives and Times. So let's just jump right into this. Okay. Oh Lord, this project was a very, <laughs> very long time coming. Um, I went through at least one or two editors co-editors rather before I ended up with um, Dr. Gary Edwards who's my colleague at Arkansas State University in fact our offices are right next to each other okay. and um, this project probably began I'm gonna say 
pretty close to almost 10 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, well, because it's an edited collection and the way that works is um, you have to get people to write, a, write each of these chapters okay. in the book. Um, and you have to get people to turn things in on time. Yes. And you have to give things back to people and get corrections. And sometimes that's a long process. I'll just leave it at that. But I'm very, very, very proud at the uh, proud of the outcome. I, I think it's a fantastic book, and I think the time that we invested in it was absolutely worth it. So, did you write any chapters personally? I didn't write any chapters in the book, and in fact, a lot of the stuff I I had not yet turned to writing about black women's history in Arkansas at the time that I started this project. Okay. Um, and actually, Arkansas Women is part of a, a series from the University of Georgia Press. So there's a Mississippi Women book, Tennessee Women, South Carolina Women. So all the southern states should have one of these edited collections. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I hadn't actually started writing that kind of history yet. Now, um, I did write the introduction. So I did write the introduction to the book to tell people what to expect. And um, I also outlined all the chapters in the book. Is there a website where we can look up mm -hmm. some background information on the book? I would, yes, definitely University of Georgia Press. Okay. Mm -hmm. University of Georgia Press. And you can just put in my name or Arkansas Women. Okay, so while I'm typing mm -hmm. slowly. Okay, that's all right. That's um, quite all right. Please give us some insight into what people can expect when reading this book. Well, um, it's, as I said before, it's a collection of different kinds of Arkansas women, black women, white women, indigenous women. And actually the first article is about indigenous women in what was then Arkansas territory. Um, it also includes such black women as um, Dr. Dr. Edith Irby Jones, who was the first African-American woman to graduate from the University of Arkansas Medical School. Um, it also includes um, Mamie Phipps Clark, Dr. Mamie Phipps Clark, who was the first African-American woman to receive a PhD in psychology from Columbia University. Oh. And by the way, most people don't know this, but Dr. Mamie Phipps Clark from Hot Springs, Arkansas, was the one who developed the doll test that Thurgood Marshall used in Brown versus the Board of Education. Really? Yeah, absolutely. If the doll test, would, and you, you can look it up, but the doll test was actually her master's thesis. It really? actually came from her master's thesis. And I still see videos of that circulating now. It's it's powerful. Um, I don't know if that particular test is still done mm -hmm. in modern times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I still see videos circulating mm -hmm. um, where they have the white and black child sure. looking at the dolls mm -hmm. and they're asking questions. Mm -hmm. And that came that came from Arkansas, folks. That came from Arkansas. Yes, that came All from right. Dr. Mamie Phipps Clark from uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, down in Garland County. All right. So, mm -hmm. do you feel that? People can learn a lot from earlier achievements mm -hmm. and really help to really help allow that to help them spearhead their research mm -hmm. development of other programs or okay. Oh I think absolutely. To how to no 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 I, 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 I know exactly what you're asking and I think that's a, I think that's exactly what this book has the power to do. Um, you know, to take the, the case of Dr. Edith Irby Jones, for example, um, she came from very humble beginnings. She came from rural Arkansas, and part of the reason why she was able to even go to school was because she got a little bit of financial help from Daisy Bates, who's also in this book. That's amazing. So all of these people's lives are connected in one form um, or another, right? I must say that um, since we've been having our talks and you've been a guest on my show many times, I have been more interested in looking at not just women, but African Americans in Arkansas since I am technically from here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Born in Texas, raised in Arkansas the majority of my life, so mm -hmm. I'm in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to know who has done what mm -hmm. and when and how can I use that to help me in my endeavors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see what's already been done mm -hmm. so that I won't either so that I can build on their legacy hopefully yeah and and the research I'm telling you reveals all of that um the um Arkansas Press which was a newspaper owned by Daisy Bates and her husband LC if you want to know what's going on in black communities in Arkansas take a look at that newspaper okay. and, and that too is in the Arkansas Historical Newspaper Database wow. at Arkansas State University. I mean, 
you you would be astonished by the volume of information that's in these black newspapers. So even though we don't have Twitter, or Instagram, or Facebook or whatever at this point in history, people are communicating with each other. They always have. And but yeah, Miss mm-hmm. Helen says that. Uh, I guess her and her children have Daisy Bates books. Well, Helen, you're going to have to share or can mm-hmm. I borrow rent or something? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing and joining our conversation. Mm-hmm. I would love to encourage everyone to get your hands on publications that are about us. Absolutely. Um, or, or do the research and write your own. There you go. Oh, yeah. We can never have enough writers mm-hmm. in this world. Sure. I saw a, a post a, on a quote I think you posted about something about women not writing enough. Like, sure. mm-hmm. there's just not enough. Mm-hmm. We can never write too much. So, no. particularly when certain kinds of stories have not been told. That's right. Right. It, you may be the person to tell that story. Absolutely. So, um, when you t- are talking to your students about the different projects that you're working on, what are some of the key things you try to instill in them when it comes to? I'm sure you meet some students that are very unsure of themselves Mm -hmm. feel they're just not I don't want to say worthy that's not the word Mm -hmm. they're not eligible they're not they don't have the requirements I guess you can say I'm sorry I'm searching for words today (laughs) no it's okay Um, what I would tell anybody is anybody can write history I just happen to have several degrees in it but um, everybody writes can write history everybody has a history Um, everybody has somebody in their family who's done something that's really interesting that they don't know anything about. So, so for example, when I talk about the civil rights movement, when I teach the civil rights movement, I will often ask my students to, you know, ask your older folks what they have done, because oftentimes they have stories that they haven't shared with you because they think you don't care. Wow. They, 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 They think you don't care and they think you aren't interested. But if you start asking those questions and probing a little bit, I think you'd be very surprised at what you'd find. I really would love to see people have more conversations with the older generation. Absolutely. Um, I have seen kind of a rise in what you call the living history Mm -hmm. videos where um, individuals are being interviewed, individuals that are still alive that are able to recall events from, say, 50, 60 years ago Mm -hmm. and beyond. Mm -hmm. Um, There are now video compilations of... Oh, I can tell you about one excellent one that we've just gotten in Arkansas State. Okay. It's called The History Makers, and you can just look that up online if you want. It's called The History Makers. and it's been around maybe for 17 or 18 years now. And it's um, a collection of oral histories of African Americans. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's the word I was looking at. Yeah, th- there it is right there, the history makers. And it's, it's this fab- fabulous collection um, of oral histories of African Americans. I think there are at least 3,000 of them in there. And I've done a, a search in it and Arkansas came up 1,600 times. Oh, wow. So we have recently gotten this at our library. It should be operational very soon. Um, and in fact, Juliana Richardson, and she's an African-American woman based out of Chicago, Illinois. She's the one who established this website and this database. So this is an African-American woman who has a law degree from Harvard and essentially gave that up to develop this. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. One thing that caught my eye right off top, I mean, it's a very beautifully designed website, mm-hmm. um, but on the right-hand side, this day in history, like that grabbed my eye. Absolutely. And so you can learn tidbits of history. Absolutely. Like this one says, in 1984, first black coach wins NCAA basketball tournament. Mm-hmm. I would never thought about that. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and there and there's several databases that have really interesting stuff. So, for example, there's BlackPast.org. Um, there's Pushback, Push Black, excuse me. Uh, so there, I mean, there are tons of places to to gather all of this information. But if you look at the history makers, as I said before, uh, we have a subscription to it at Arkansas State University, and you can get the oral history interviews and full transcripts. So if you wanted to write a paper about it, there's your primary primary source right there. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different tabs. I would have to just take my time and go through. Um. Mm-hmm. And um, since you pulled up the National Airmen's Association of America, I want to point out something about that, too. Okay. That has an Arkansas connection. Okay. Um, because down in Jackson County, Arkansas, there is a little town called Blacksville. 
which was established by a man named Pickens Black. And okay. he's, he's long since been dead. But at one point, he owned 8,000 acres of land in Jackson County. The town had its own school. It had its own general store. And his son, Pickens Black Jr., was one of two African Americans in Arkansas, I believe, who had a pilot's license. And they had a plane and a hangar for the plane in Blacksville, down in Jackson, Ar- Jackson uh, County, Arkansas. Wow. Yeah. So that these is- stories, I mean, and not very much has been, that's another project I'm working on, <laughs> but not very much has been written about him, but Pickens Black Jr. was a member of the National Airmen's um, Association of America. Okay, so there's nothing that our people haven't done, haven't Absolutely. had their hands Absolutely. We in. just don't know about it. Wow. Yeah. And so I would hope this information would encourage our younger generation that you don't have to settle for what's handed to you. Even though some of these businesses are no longer around, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean we can't revive them or mm-hmm. start something else mm-hmm. based off of what was. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's already um, a blueprint available. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there's yeah. so much that can be done. Um, you see a lot of entrepreneurs popping up, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to say they're not. I'm not going to put down anybody for doing what they do I just feel that we can work we can get more accomplished together mm-hmm. than separate so if people could find a way to utilize to combine their skills mm-hmm. you I don't know I'm I know not trying to go off in a tangent I, I know today. what you're saying and I, and I did find the quote that I posted it was um, by Bell Hooks and it says no black woman in this culture can write too much indeed no woman writer can write too much no woman has ever written enough Amen. And that's, that's the quote <laughs> by Bell Hooks. Alrighty. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have to screenshot that and keep that in mind. Okay. Keep that on the forefront. Okay. Um, Helen uh, posted another comment. She says, have you ever noticed the look on the faces of, or in the eyes of those who lived throughout histories is saddening and strengthening? Well, well um, absolutely. Um, what some of these people have survived, um, I would imagine they're suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome although for a very long time there wasn't a term um, for any of that but many of these people are not only physically tired they're psychologically tired because of what they've experienced wow mm-hmm. so we do owe a great debt of gratitude to people who have paved the way for us to be where we are mm-hmm. um uh, even though I, radio was not like my, it wasn't even my interest before I even got into mm-hmm. it. I mean, of course, I love listening to music, but that was all it was. Mm-hmm. But I have since watched, um, well, it was a movie slash documentary about P.D. Green mm-hmm. um, and some others that were in the early years in radio mm-hmm. and how they used their platform and influence mm-hmm. to do what they do and pave the way for mm-hmm. those to you be able to use their voice. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, when, like you said, once you realize that it is about more than the music, um, it, it opens all kinds of possibilities. And, and I think it's you know really good for people to allow themselves to be exposed to things that they think aren't interesting because you really don't know until you try it. I never, ever imagined that I would be writing Arkansas history, and now I can't understand why I wasn't before. You're not even native Arkansas. I'm not a native Arkansan. I'm married to a native Arkansan. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm not a native Arkansan. So I guess by way of marriage. <laughs> well, and, but I also think that um, sometimes when you're not a native, you can see the value in things that others might take for granted. Okay. Mm-hmm. So hopefully you can also inspire others who do who are native mm-hmm. Arkansans to dig deeper into their history. Absolutely. Um, even, if, even if you only start with, just say your hometown, like yeah. I'm from Mariana. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, there's some really, really <laughs> wonderfully rich history there. And again, it's not taught in schools. Mm-hmm. The things that you find, they're not going to be taught in schools either because no one wants to teach it or it's... And, and sometimes it's just a matter of people not knowing the, to teach yes. it. They don't know that the history... Um, exists. And so um, speaking of Mariana, I'm giving a paper at the Rural Women's Studies Association um, meeting in, when is it, May of this year. Oh, wow. And I'm going to be talking about a woman named Anna Strong, who was yeah, from Mariana, I'm Arkansas. To, you I'm, went to the school. Yes. Well, a lot of people don't know that she was um, not only a very powerful person in Mariana and in Lee County, 
but she was a powerful national figure. She okay. served on all these, for example, she, she served during World War II, she served on a committee called the National Women's Com Committee for um, Social Protection or something like that. And so she's serving on this committee with people like um, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, <laughs> the president's wife, because they're concerned about people contracting venereal diseases during the war. And so I have all this information where they are listing committee members and it says Anna Strong, from Marianna, Arkansas. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm a total fan girl. Yes. <laughs> I would love to hear that. I don't. Okay. When and where are you going to be presenting this talk? This is well. Actually, the conference is going to be at Ohio University in Athens. Okay. Are there, so. Is there going to be some live streaming or something? I. You know, I could ask someone to live stream it for me. <laughs> I could ask somebody to do that, perhaps. Just, you know, I said, can you do this for the folks back in Jonesboro for me? I sure would appreciate it. And but, I, but if you want to read more about her, actually, if you go to um, the Encyclopedia of Arkansas History and Culture. I love website. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a blurb on her. Um, there's a blurb on her in there. Encyclopedia um, of Arkansas History and Culture. find it Anna Strong this would be great for um, people that actually live there I'm sure that mm -hmm. the generation of people who know that information are either no longer alive mm -hmm. or or too old to remember or, or maybe they do remember <laughs> but nobody's asking them about it you know yes mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah and I'll tell you about another figure from that part of um, Arkansas. Um, many people don't know very much about Maddie Woodridge, who was from Helena, Arkansas. And she, along with Eleanor Roosevelt, established National Teachers Day. What? Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look up National Teachers Day, it will say established by a teacher from Arkansas, but they don't tell you that's an African-American teacher from Helena, Arkansas. So was her name deliberately left off the recognition? I don't, I don't know. Oh. I, I can't speak to any of that, but I just happened to know who the teacher was. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, in between my class, I have a lot of late night reading going on. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, when, you know, when you see me posting all kinds of stuff on Facebook, that's what I'm doing. I'm up in the middle of the night reading like a crazy person. <laughs> I love every time you come. I can't thank you enough for oh, like. No. Well, thank you for having me. Opening up my mind to want to do more research and want to learn more. Um, again, you can never learn enough. <laughs> but we're going to take a break. Okay. We're going to come back. We're going to wrap up our conversation. So. Yes. Stay tuned out there, you all. You don't want to miss the last part of the show. You tune in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Today we're going to cover how to read your credit card statement. Let's start with your credit card's annual percentage rate or APR. This is the amount of interest you'll pay on an annual basis for your card. The APR is an important factor in calculating your monthly finance charges. The higher this rate, the more money it will cost you to use this credit. On most credit card statements, the APR is presented as both the APR and either a daily periodic rate or a monthly periodic rate. To compare the interest rates of credit cards, visit indexcreditcards.com or bankrate.com. Next, the minimum payment. This is the amount you must pay on credit card accounts each billing cycle to remain in good standing with your creditor. The minimum payment is usually determined by taking a percentage of your new balance. The faster you pay down your balances, the less money you will spend on interest payments. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks.
Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Now it's even easier than ever to support KLEK 102.5 FM. If you love what we do and want to support us, you can now donate by simply sending a text message. That's right. All you have to do is text the keyword give to KLEK to 844-544-7171. Once again, text the keyword give to KLEK to 844-544-7171 to make your donation. And don't worry how to spell it. Either way you spell it, whether using the number 2, letter T-O, or T-O-O. If you text GIVE to KLEK to 844-544-7171, you will be able to make your tax-deductible donation. We're your community radio station, where it's all about your life, your music. Don't forget, text GIVE to KLEK to 844-544-7171. Full Sun Gifts, celebrating their one-year anniversary throughout April, is a supporter of KLEK. Full Sun Gifts is located at 606 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro and offers a variety of gift items for all occasions. Full Sun will host the Scout Bad Trunk Show April 12th and 13th and the Alley and Bird Jewelry Trunk Show April 20th. More information is available at Full Sun Gifts on Facebook and Instagram and 870-974-8480. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha Alpha's mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health, and retirement benefits, top-of-the-line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. 
House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. And now back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quabila Jones, speaking with Dr. Sharice Jones French. And I don't know about you, but I have truly been enjoying this conversation. Um, I have been learning so, so much. Uh, Ms. Helen says, thank you, ladies, and God bless. Thank, thank you, you, Helen. God bless you, too. <laughs> All right, so we have talked about the, her lecture that she is presenting tomorrow, mm-hmm. April 3rd, at 4.15 p.m. Mm-hmm. in the white river room Mm -hmm. of the student union Mm -hmm. arkansas state university you Mm -hmm. don't want to miss it please make plans to go out Um, the kids will be out of school by then so take the kids along as well (laughs) Um, it's never too early for them to start learning history and the lecture is called fighting protesting and organizing yes um and oh shoot i'm sorry (laughs) okay Fighting, protesting, and organizing African Americans in World War One, Arkansas. Um, and so, please go out again, April third, four fifteen p.m. Mm-hmm. on the campus of Arkansas State University. And then we talked about the book that's coming out. Yes. Let me get some other mails. <laughs> Did you post it so people can see it? I want to copy the link. Um, it's called Arkansas Women, Their Lives and Times. This was edited by Dr. Cherise Jones French and Gary T. Edwards. Um, and this is a compilation of stories of women in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say women making moves. I love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Powerful, mm-hmm. influential women in Arkansas that I wanna say, can I say game changers? <laughs> Were they game Oh, I, I think you can say that. <laughs> Absolutely. So Please get your hands on this book. It is going to be released in June. June released 1st. in June for on oh, June first. Mm-hmm. We'll make sure that uh, we do a press release on that for through Kelly K. Um, so you can go look up some information about this book on www.ugapress.org, mm-hmm. and then in the search box, just type in Arkansas Women, mm-hmm. and this page will pop up with a description and all of the contributing writers mm-hmm. to the book and it also gives you the pricing information um I s- okay I see there's a hard cover option and then there's a paper co- uh, paper mm-hmm. cover option so and I'm very anxious to see what I'm anxious to hold it in my hand oh. I haven't I haven't gotten my copies yet what so, no <laughs> I haven't gotten my copies yet and if you'll notice on the cover that's Dr. Edith Irby Jones Okay, tell us a little bit more about her. Okay, she was the first African American woman to receive um, to receive a medical degree from the University of Arkansas Medical School. What? Mm-hmm. Wow. And and she's still very much alive today. Um, and I I don't know if she's practicing or not, but she's still very much alive. That's amazing. So please make plans to get this book June the 1st. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would definitely do a press release, let you know when, where, and all that good stuff here through KLEKFM. Uh, we might have to do some photos or do all kind of yeah, let's do wonderful things. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get your copies in your hand, let us know so mm-hmm. we can make that happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so again, we thank you so much for coming by. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. In this last two minutes, would you like to give some final words of inspiration just anything you would like to share um read write <laughs> learn i mean these are the three things that drive my life that drive what i love to do um and the more i find out the more i'm anxious to find out all right same here i'm very grateful for i dare i want to say call your friend i mean you're yeah you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> it's grateful. decided and it's done you're my friend all right <laughs> I'm grateful for having you as a friend um, and having access to the knowledge that you have. And um, you really inspire me to be a a better woman and really own my blackness, I guess you could say. Well, you inspire me as well. You inspire me as well. Queens recognize other queens. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So please check out um, 
make plans to go to the lecture tomorrow. I'm going to say it over and over again. April 3rd, 415, uh, White River Room, Arkansas State University Student mm -hmm. Union. Um, make plans to get your hands on this book, Arkansas Women, Their Lives, Their Time, Their Lives and Times. Please support our own right here in our community that are doing great things that are trying to help you learn more so um and stay on the lookout um go to www.klekfm.org and be on the lookout for more upcoming news and events around the community as a whole I want to thank everyone for joining us today tomorrow is the first wednesday we will have Jonesboro police department chief rick elliott and others so you don't want to miss it have a great and blessed day everybody